Hey everybody, guess what? I'm heading home and look who picked me up. How's it going? Ryan, the kilowatts in this really cool orange wrapped uh, vehicle, this Tesla. And tell us about your car. Yeah, so this one is one of our fleet cars. Um, I, we're in a long range dual motor 2021. Model Y, not, not too much special about it. It's orange. Yeah, it, so. it was easy to find when he said I'm outside the hotel. Uh, anyway, he offered to give me a ride to the airport. I'm heading back home after uh, a week, uh, a couple days here in San Francisco for a sustainability summit with my my uh, other job, the one that actually pays the bills. Um, but we're he figured we'd come talk about Tesla. We just actually left the X headquarters, and the first time I'd ever seen that. Yeah. And my impression is it was actually very nondescript. I kind of thought it was going to be a little bit more branded, but it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, they still have like a few of the like Twitter birds on the side of one of the buildings. They used to have one more in like the lobby that you could see. Um, but yeah, from the outside, and that's actually true of a lot of startups here. Like, yeah. I live right next to OpenAI. You, you wouldn't know. Yeah. Without Google, you'd never know they were there. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I saw Andre about uh, an hour ago. I saw Andre Carpathia about an hour ago walking into the OpenAI building. No way. Yeah. Well, that'd have been cool. Yeah. Oh, I missed it by half an hour. Sure. <laughs> well, anyway, so we're on our way to San Francisco. We are in this vehicle that actually does have FSD beta 11.4.7.2, which is the current latest version, the same one that I've got on my Model Y uh, back in Jacksonville that I've been driving. So this is the latest version. We got what? You got an SFO airport program, programmed in here. And we're getting on the highway. And we're, getting, we're jumping on the highway. Light traffic. What a great way to use and, it. Yeah, and beta's driving. Um, this isn't a beta video necessarily, but we'll just sit here and chat. No, but here's an interesting situation though, yeah. because three lanes became too real quick, the lightning is kind of encroaching. I wonder how... Yeah, we got the merge I'm here. Right. They don't have yeah. a blinker on, it's a little it, tight. I might want to play the brakes. <laughs> what are you what gonna a great do? way to start the video. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It, I would like... I think the Tesla's going to wait. I hope so. Oh, it, oh, it's actually going over here, and it's going to end up waiting. That okay, actually worked out okay. It worked. It wasn't as polite as I would like it to it's be. It's because but... he wasn't as aggressive. If he was more aggressive, the Tesla would have backed off. Sure. But it was this now week. We're, oh, now, no. now we've got plenty of gap. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, no, but that's, back to good. but that's okay. I mean, it, it, it was fine. It did it, but it wasn't what a human would have done. No, that was not a great example of FSD. The rest of it, I'm sure, will be great, but we had that yeah, started off. Soft. But, but that, you know, so I drove with Omar the other day. Omar picked me up. And uh, so here in San Francisco, I got two rides to the airport. How awesome is that? <laughs> um, and Omar's drive, we had one intervention with a big truck that got in the way and he had to press the accelerator. But it was only one intervention on a half hour drive and it did a really good job. And he kept saying... Is this different than your drives in Florida? Because everybody keeps saying we're overfit for San Francisco. And I actually had to say, other than your roads are a little wider, the markings are pretty good, it felt identical. Are the markings better here or worse here? On the highway, they felt much better. Okay. Um, but Omar was using a 15% override where when I make my videos, I leave it standard just so everybody can see what it's doing. And as we all know, if you're going the speed limit on the highway, sometimes it's actually unsafe. Yeah, I'm surprised you do that. Well, I choose to do that when I make FSD videos. My own personal profile when I'm driving, I don't. Okay. So Cause I, yeah, I always have at least a five mile per hour addition. Yeah, I use 10% on my personal profile. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, and, and honestly, it was just going from feedback on people going to show us what the car does on its own. Sure. Because that's what they're gonna have to solve if we go autonomous, theoretically. Yeah, so no, right? I care, yeah, if, if the car is completely autonomous, I care less about the exact buffer. I'm just fine letting, as long as it yeah. gets me there safely. Yeah. I less. So when that feature came out on this build about you know, keeping up with traffic flow, we sort of started going, oh, maybe this is a little bit of a feature about that. But it ended mm -hmm. up being more about changing speeds in between. But mm -hmm. so how many cars do you have now? Yeah, so my fleet is up to 12 cars. I just sold the Rivian. So I actually had 13 and now we're back down to 12. And how many Cybertrucks are on order? 50, 54, 54. So how many of you are... Uh, before Ryan on your Cybertruck orders. I'm betting I'm behind him. <laughs> I'm 78,000. Oh, in terms of the list? If, I ordered in the first 30 seconds and somehow I'm 78,000. I don't know how, but I was actually working the event that night. So I was I was not the one driving the Cybertruck, but I was driving the Performance yeah. Model 3 around yeah. Hawthorne that night. I worked at Tesla back then. And where are you on the list? I, Is there a secret list of people that got on before the orders to open? I don't think so. I don't. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where 78,000 people came from. Could it have just been the internet clickers? It could have been the internet clickers. It could have, I, I don't know. I'm somewhere in the, like, my first one was in the 100,000 range. It's also possible that we've just got, like, wrong Number. initial numbers. Yeah. I, I, there's no real way to know yeah. exactly. We all know 
until they maybe this month. I mean, I mean, we should know real soon. When I mean, do you think the event's gonna be? I'm like, I'm gonna check my phone to make sure there's not been a tweet about it. Like, it feels I, like the, today. Today, what is it? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Uh, I was surprised they announced like the cyber beer thing today. I thought today would have been the day, but I've also thought that a couple times now. So I'm I, starting to think we're in the first two weeks of November for the uh, event. For the event, but the announcement should be any time. I yeah. I mean, if they announce it today, we're not going to have it before the first week of November. I would think we could. I, I the way yeah. they've done events in the past, it's often within one to two weeks. It's, well, it's rarely, it's not. It's almost never within one week. But yeah, it's within two weeks. So we could have something before the end of the. When, when's Halloween? Thirty first. October thirty first. And there's like a little bit like a you know. So dress, we got dressing up element to I this mean, event. We got earnings between now and then. Well, that that's when they will. Not, I, I think that's when they've got to announce it. If they don't announce it, if they announce it then, then it's like not even coming this year. I, I'm, I, all good. hell goes out the window if they don't announce it. I, at think, their earnings. I think you might be right. If they don't announce it by or at earnings, it might be December or after. But it's it's really they're pushing it, and I I, I appreciate they're still like sprinkling things out there, like the wraps, like the cyber beer. But it feels like, come on, it's time. It's time. I, we, especially with those castings that Joe caught down at Austin. Oh my God, they were, that's got to be like the only thing that I was waiting for those cars to be built to know that they are good, yeah. and then they're going to announce the event. That feels like the obvious thing to me. Did the twenty million battery rate make you feel over like it was? Oh my God, that's a lot. Or oh my God, wait a minute, maybe we're not there on the ramp yet. I'm a little bit in between on that, just because I don't follow the exact yeah. battery counts. I don't know, for example, how much a Cybertruck needs versus I've got one Austin built Model Y. I don't know how many cells that yeah. use, so I wasn't tracking those numbers. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Giesegi, uh, Limiting Factor, and Dirty Tesla, Chris made a few comments about what they thought that number equated to, mm -hmm. which felt like, I think Jordan said he was, it was right on his October number. Matter of fact, I think he mailed how many, what month they were going to hit the 20 awesome. million battery rate by. But I think, I think the run rate, but at the same time, we only got the Giga Texas numbers and we don't know if Kato Road is That's in addition point. to that. And is this 20 million plus, mm -hmm. but those castings and how about this? If they don't put those castings on cars, where are they going to start stacking them next? <laughs> I mean, this obviously is a very different vehicle, so they need more vehicles to test it with. Like, we're seeing more ve Like, we saw maybe, like, 16 Highlands in the U.S., if that, yeah. before they announced Highland and China. Um, and, and, and basically globally, except for North America. Um, good job, FSD. Yeah. I, it's it, yeah. We're doing a merge here. I'm just going to turn around. So this is... what. Tell us what interstate we're on. Uh, uh, 580? No, 80. Sorry. Uh, 80. G getting on to 80 to go down towards SFO. we got like a, a multi-lane merge here. And, and it's just slow, bumper to bumper. But everybody knows when the, the car is a little bit more polite than sometimes you need to be in order to, to interject in traffic. But... Uh, every one of these is, scenarios is unique. I, I haven't had to intervene. Yet, no, so no, no, you hadn't anything. I'm, I'm not filming your feeder thing. If, Here, if you yeah. do, if you say you intervene, let us know. Yeah, but I will. I'll announce it. I think the um, the car is doing a good job. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to your company. So you you, you were telling me just before we went on film, you've got two branches now, or you're doing well, two different things? Yeah, or? two different things, two different companies. Uh, the kilowatts, as people know it, is like the social media, with, uh, as well as like this car fleet that I've got on Turo. There's an interesting merge here where the car is pretty close to us already, and we still didn't have to intervene. Okay. Nice. That's, I think, the last true merge that we'll have. Yeah. Uh, so that was the three merges real quick that it handled all right. It did fine. Yeah, it did a good job. Um, but so yeah, back to the kilowatts. So the kilowatts is accessibility and education. So accessibility, I share a bunch of cars on Turo. I try to make it easy for people to experience EVs for the first time, or if they've got them at home, to continue yeah. using EVs when they travel. I've never used Turo. Is this something I should try to do? I think so. I mean, yeah. what you're going to hear is more that I, I think it's great, but but, uh, but we'll get yeah. to the but in a second. So then there's the uh, education side, everything I do on social media, talking about EVs, sharing opinions on EVs. Like, you know, there's a lot of great ones, but there's also a lot of not so great ones. Uh, and also, like for example, like plug-in hybrids, are those great? My opinion is no, and, yeah. and I think if you're based, in short, I think if you're buying a new car right now, it should be electric. If you're buying a used car, consider a, a normal hybrid. Plug-in hybrids are kind of yeah. not great. Point is, our channel spe speaks just about EVs and what what makes them great in order to encourage both customers, but also companies to make better EVs. Yeah. Um, all of that is to say, I've had a great time hosting on Turo, but 
in being a host on there specifically with only EVs, I've discovered that there's a few shortcomings that they have when it comes to EVs. And EVs actually should be not just shortcomings, they should be better. They're always connected to the internet. We can we can know whether or not they're locked or unlocked. We can know how far someone's driven because it's communicating that to the cloud at all times. We can know if someone's in LA, you know, six hour drive from San Francisco and they've got four hours left in their trip. We can do things with them. Yeah. So I've launched a new company called Dispatch EV. The idea is consistent quality experiences with EVs. Um, colloquially, it will just be called Dispatch. But yeah, it's just an app where we've connected directly to the software of the EVs on our platform. I just moved the minimum speed of the car up a little cool. bit. All right. Um, so what are you doing? Yeah, I just rolled the wheel up to get it up to 65. And what's the speed limit? It's 50 here, but that's yeah. not really yeah. like... People treat it like 65 throughout this section. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen anyone get pulled over for 65 here, so... Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, point is, yeah, Dispatch is going to be this one place where you can manage all of your vehicles. If you've got many, uh, if you're a user just trying to access vehicles, it's going to be a hands-off experience where you're not expected to meet with the host. You're just using the app, document the condition of the car, unlock it, and go. Are you integrating with the Tesla API? Yes. Because didn't we just hear this week about a new API using some new protocols? Are you, exactly. Are you so already engaged we, there? We are working with Tyler uh, Corsair of Tesla Scope, uh, but we also applied ourselves as dispatch, and we're accepted into the program. Nice. So that's exciting, and it's, I would say, foundation. Are they charging for that access? At this, time, at this time, no. They've basically suggested that there's a future priced tiers to come yeah and a lot of what they're offering in the free tiers is a little bit concerningly low in terms of like actual engagement with the car it, yeah it would cause some issues if it's maintained at that low but we haven't launched our platform yet nor does tesla really necessarily convey that they know exactly what people are going to need yeah. so it's really more opening that space for conversation yeah and so we're just basically putting out there to tesla here's what we're doing and so far we're, we're in the program yeah whatever that will be i haven't heard much feedback is this a good thing for consumers that access the api i mean so, i did back in the old days try to ping the json i got a little bit of data out of it but i'll just say i'm out of it now is this a good thing that it's involved in? it's definitely a good thing for a number of things like basically you know you want to know who's able to see your data for example like yeah. if you logged into something long ago or even like your kid did or even like a not quite a renter but like that kind of thing can happen where you don't know who can see your vehicle. That's, I think, really why yeah. they're getting serious about this now is because, yeah, pe um, <laughs> Just showing oh. you what happened. So this little Toyota Prius just uh, kind of cut two lanes over, and you did you do anything? No, I got ready to do something, but no, I didn't have to. The car to. slowed down, and it, it, it let him do his thing. Yeah, it yeah. actually did a good job with defensive driving there. Oh, that was a good one. Um, but yeah, so this basically just means that going forward, you will know where your car's data is, and yeah. then again, Tesla can control, which is also just good for them financially to know how many actions are being triggered and what is that doing. It, they've not really looked at this as seriously before. Now they're going to be able to see it and foster that community in a really healthy way. It's the same thing like Apple's done. I think vertical integration yeah. is, is great, but there's going to be things that you as a company don't want to do or build out. Like, yeah. you know, there's a company, Revel, out in. Um, yeah. Uh, out in New York that does, uh, yeah. you know, they're... I had some people recommend me to use Rebel recently. Yeah. I haven't used it yet. But. Yeah, so they're like Uber, but for EV-specific yeah. rides. And they're a great company, they're great experiences, but Revel needs to know more about their trips. They mm -hmm. need to know more about how their drivers are using the cars. They need to know the state of charge. So another company like Standard Fleet, mm -hmm. I'm actually, uh, I've worked with them. They provide kind of the data for someone like a Revel to know what their cars are doing. Interesting. And it's like Tesla could build up a lot of that back end, but there's just so many different use cases and so many like, yeah, just different customers and different solutions that they're now enabling us to be serious about developing those solutions. Yeah. So you have an app. Yes. And you had a team develop it. Yep. And is it, so is it, what, what sort of is it open? Is it private? Is where you're a test yeah. test flight now, or it's not open yet. We're we're developing our features first. We're, we're testing them kind of with my fleet. Um, again, as I'm currently hosting on Turo, just testing out like yeah. fleet management features, and then the goal is basically yeah to launch a marketplace ideally by the end of the year. Oh, so cool. what we're trying to do is like shop this prototype around. Say hey, here's what we are able to do now. Yeah. Here's what we're planning to do with the marketplace. But at the end of the day. Marketplaces like this are so much about insurance, yeah. and 
honestly starting those deals in terms of insurance, you have to spend so much money yeah. that we're just we're just in the process of fundraising right now. Are you are you doing anything with cleaning and uh, the other sort of pe and what's that in the business like if you do it yourself? Yeah, so I mean, my goal with. Uh, with my kilowatts cars is I'm in charge of cleaning that, but with dispatch, it's not like that. It's gonna yeah. be much more like the term marketplace. Yeah. But we are going to have ways of incentivizing clean cars or charged cars. Yeah. For example, if we know how charged your vehicle is, we can prioritize it in the listings. So if someone's trying to book a last minute booking, you don't want to book a Tesla, you know, when you land at SFO to yeah. pick up in 30 minutes and then find out you got it, but it's got 20 miles of range. Yeah. So we can, especially for last minute bookings, bring those to the top and say, hey, the ones that already are charged are right here. Go ahead and book those. And we're also going to penalize people, for example, with cleaning. Yeah. If it's not clean, when you document the condition at the start of the trip, yeah. we're going to we're gonna look at that a little bit more than we've seen other companies. How is Hertz handling charging right now? Have you stayed tuned with this that? Is part of why I've we, heard it's a problem. Yeah, this is part of why we started Dispatch 2 is because a lot of these rental car companies that are starting to get into EVs, they don't have the means to keep their cars charged or they're having to employ a lot of people. Because yeah. we've got a really high density. It's great that they're now starting to think about supercharging that is exclusive to Hertz, but a lot of these locations don't have it. And to be honest, supercharging is cheaper per vehicle, but there's a lot of other EVs that they don't have the means to charge. I recently uh, rented a, a Volvo EX or XC40 from Enterprise. Yeah. And again, they had no means to charge that. So they literally said, rent it. It's got 35% of the charge. Return it with whatever. We're not going to charge you because we can't refill it. Yeah. So it's it's a very much like a destructive way of uh, thinking about refilling these vehicles at this time. And I I think individuals, especially individuals with experience owning Teslas, are going to be better at delivering on that. And again, there's more that we can do instead of just saying, "Hey, it's destructive." Yeah. Let's just say you get a vehicle that starts with 30% charge. Yeah. We're going to reward you if you return it with 80% of charge. No, you should get the Delta at least. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. That, your time. And that charge is worth something. Yeah, because you don't get that if you, you know, when the, the current rental car model is, you know, hey, we pay for a full tank of gas, but of course, if you return it with way more than they give you to, with you, you, you know, get you nothing back. So you we're, we're just going to be as, you know, one yeah. to one as, as we can technically be. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, yeah. Congratulations on that. I, I, I hope it really works out. But I, I have to say, I'm personally most impressed with what they, I saw you show me on the app. I envy good development. I, I respect it and I understand that having people that can natively develop on both iOS and if you're doing Android, yeah, for, the, for that crowd, I don't know, are you doing Android? I saw the iOS yeah, on your so, phone, but. So we're, we're developing with iOS primarily, okay. but the way that we're doing it is meant to be basically copied and pasted yeah. over. Obviously we'll do some additional testing for that, but yeah, the goal is proof of concept so we can shop it out. And then while we're shopping it out, we're building everything else out. Yeah. I, just it, the experience is so much better with a good app and for those of you that watched my video yesterday you know we were playing with the Waymo app a little bit and I was actually pretty impressed with the Waymo app but also you should be it's a good yeah, product it felt like an uber app with you know walking directions to where you needed to go it, it, times were included it showed you the stoplights if the Waymo was at a stoplight before it came to guide you there was a lot of uh, feedback there yeah. and, and user feeling connected to your vehicle much like when you're waiting on an uber you kind of get a sense of when it's going to be there almost in the minute yeah yeah i think that's an important part but i think what you're saying is actually like really cool and true that actually and not a lot of people talk about this this is one of the main differences between cruise and waymo waymo does a really good job of when you're in the vehicle showing a visualization similar to tesla's visualization um but waymo's even as you're saying on the phone app it shows you it's at a stoplight, it's at a stop sign, what, I mean, it's four minutes away, it so, shows yeah. why it's not there yet. Versus Cruise, it doesn't show you anything, and on the app it just says, yeah, it'll be here eventually. And I've had times yeah. when it's got stuck behind construction, I think, because it's just stuck in an intersection for three minutes, and I have no clue why. Yeah. So, really this, like, you know, we, we can show you here, but like the visualization, that kind of stuff really does matter in order for us to trust the driver. It's even yeah. better than an Uber because I know what it's yeah. seeing. And if I want to see more, I still can. What I respect most about Tesla's visualization is it still gives me a heads up of the things that it is looking at. The blue car is being highlighted. I know you're you're seeing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I saw that yesterday in the Waymo too. Exactly. The cars that it knows it needs to merge behind. It highlighted it. It's, it's a peace of mind. Uh, and here we, we just took the uh, airport exit. Have you have you intervened yet? No. We're good. basically in a robo taxi with Ryan sitting under the seatbelt. Um, yeah. Just an extra level of protection, but yeah. It's yeah. Great. It's um, 
it, 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 this car is doing amazing things. Whether or not it's robo taxi ready or not, in my mind, is a semantic based oh, on the approach. About, we can talk about that. No, it's it's a semantic based on the approach Tesla is taking and what they would like to overcome right now. Sure. Where I'm coming from again, especially when yeah. you think about like dispatch in the future, there's a there's a huge monetary hurdle. Yeah. And if you have a driver in the driver's seat, it will never be the same financially. Like the, there's an order of magnitude more revenue to be made when you can remove the driver. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know how much of a semantic it is, especially without like you know, what do you do when it does reach a situation that it cannot overcome? Right now, we've seen crews fail at that. Yeah. We've had them have to like wire in and yep. kind of remote control it from a distance. I've not yet had a situation like that with Waymo, so in my mind, Waymo might be the front runner. But I think they still have the capability of remote. They do have yeah, the capability. Yeah, they, they yeah. have the capability. Yeah. And, and they might just be hiding it better, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, for Tesla, I'm now the remote driver, but right. what happens when you remove me, and how much further do we have to get to where we can truly remove me, and do they actually hope to be able to remove me without having any remote driver. Yeah. Because that's the holy grail. That financially changes the whole metrics. That's the approach, right? So they're not even coming from the approach of ever wanting that remote. So it may take them longer to get there because of that last yeah, mile. Yeah, exactly. Or that and if they but, can do that though, it changes the entire game. But the functionality, and I, and I use this analogy a lot, the FSD experience is a bell curve. The beginning and the end of my drives, I could probably trip it up three out of five times if I wanted to. But once I'm on to the main road... It did incredible, as, as we saw here. The bell curve is just really, really good. But it's got to pick me up and it's got to drop me off in every scenario that I might want to order one. And, and those are tough. And that's where yeah. right now I think we aren't even trying to create approaches in parking garages or well, in driveways or this reversing. Is where we need, this is where we need actually smart stomach. <laughs> we need yeah, yeah, yeah. Some features we thought we would have by now, yeah. it just feels like they're putting them on the back burner. And maybe V12 will be that. Um, but we're pulling into the airport this here. Been pretty seamless. And <laughs> had a great chat with Ryan here. Uh, and what's great about it too is like, again, I was mentally more with you than I was here. I was here as an emergency. Yeah, you had your hand on the wheel. I saw some nags up here and uh, that was we, easy. you just holding the wheel and here we go. And there but, is a huge value to that. Like this is yeah. in my mind the best car for what we just experienced. Yeah. But uh, again, I'm like financially, there's a huge difference. My 12 cars can make me a lot more money if I didn't have to drive them. Yeah. But it's fun to be in the middle of it too. Oh, absolutely. Right? This is, it's a transition it. in tech. I know. It, it, we are we're at the cutting edge of it, and oh, actually, hey. speak, speak about, There's a um, a cruise. A, no, no, not a cruise. There's Where's that? I'm, I might take over here since we're at our destination. Do I'm whatever not, you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'm, de it. I'm deactivating so I can get around some traffic here. What is that guy? There's a Mercedes-Benz mapping for level three autonomy. This is what I love about the Silicon Valley, and this is like literally how it happens. That could have been a yeah. Cybertruck, for example. Yeah. Um, is I often when I'm just out and about. It's exactly what happened. So that's got a driver in it, and he's just out there, uh, you know, real world, real, uh, real world mapping. Yeah. So this is a, a, people always wonder how do I get things. It's because I when I see things like this. Keep distance. Test vehicle. <laughs> yeah. And what, what do you like think he's like, got oh, on top? Lidar. Yeah. There's definitely a lidar on top. Just one in the top middle on that mount. There's kind of an internet connectivity thing. There's not that many. There's some Michigan plates. Yes. That's Michigan interesting. <laughs> there's some radars. There's two radars in the back. Obviously, ultrasonics. There's a low radar down between the front and rear door. Look at that. And then there's a few more in the front, I'm sure we'll see. I might have to take the camera and put it back on. Let her find. Oh, there's like terminal code running on the screen. We got two dudes in there. <laughs> Let's just give it a look. And... All right. We got them. <laughs> Those guys are like reporting back to home base. We got filmed. Ah, they know it, but they're, they're going a weird way. You don't know, they're, they're wow. That, you normally wouldn't go back in that same route. That's yeah. They're just mapping. That's what they're doing. They're mapping. That's awesome. So, well, hey, let's wrap this up just because I know we're driving so around the airport. Let's go back to the airport. Yeah, okay. it's okay. We're doing an extra loop actually because of that Mercedes uh, intervention, which was awesome. I can't wait. That's probably going to be a highlight clip on X if you're all right with that. Sure, yeah. That'd be cool. Um, well, let's wrap this up. First of all, thank you for picking me up. You bet. It's great to see you Good again. Ryan and I have seen each other in person a few times, uh, mostly in Austin, I think. But yep. of course, we socialize a lot on X and communicate and, and share the love for Tesla. And uh, I appreciate what you're trying to do with these businesses you're trying to run because uh, I, uh, I love an entrepreneur because it, it takes both guts, money, and a little bit of fortitude to make things happen because uh, they don't happen by themselves. And, and I, the app development, good on you. Thank you. Man, um, 
I, and I hope I hope you the best. If if I can ever help you, let me know. Even if it's well, just to you, talk. About I think it, you just so. did. So thank you. Okay, great, Ryan. Thank you. See you, everybody. See ya.